Vaccines improve people's health. The more people are vaccinated, the less people will be coming into hospital with COVID-19. So it's really important that we think about how we might help people make informed decisions about vaccines because no one wants to force anybody to have a vaccine against their will. But we want to help people make informed decisions and check that they can process and understand all the information to make the right decision. My research is in making medicines and making vaccines. So I go to conferences where we talk the science, the lab science about making it and how we're having trouble making it. At one conference, there was this one presentation where somebody talked about vaccine hesitancy and I was really shocked. I had never come across it that people would refuse something that's supposed to be good for them. So throughout this time of looking into vaccine hesitancy, looking at the literature, hearing what people on the ground were saying, I realized that vaccine hesitancy, there was a very big religious component to it. The Kathleen Harper grant that we've been awarded from the BMA Foundation is funding work to develop interventions um, to address vaccine hesitancy um, into faith, so across faiths. So we want to talk to faith groups on their own and also existing interfaith groups. But beyond that, we're hoping that this could be the start of having different faiths coming together to discuss healthcare issues and people's perceptions and behaviours of healthcare within their faiths. And by having this group together, then we'll be able to then start addressing lots of similar issues through having these interfaith discussions and these interfaith interventions. Even though we said that religion is uh stated by many people as a reason for being vaccine hesitant, most religious people are not vaccine hesitant. Most religious people are taking the vaccine. The problem is uh, when some vaccine hesitant people can influence the bigger silent majority. The people who will come to us will go back to their community and they will be able to talk to their community members and do a lot of vaccine championship promotion and uh, burst a lot of myths. I think it's been really important to bring together Sudax, who's a lab-based scientist who develops vaccines, um, with my work about how people use vaccines and people's perceptions of them, and in particular, my work on patient and public involvement in research and being part of the research process. Because I think that there can be a disconnect between the people who are making vaccines and the people who are actually going to use the vaccines and the earlier in the process that we account for people's preferences and needs and beliefs, um, the more that that's going to be integrated into the way the vaccines developed. So doing research that will help people to accept vaccines enhances my other research on making vaccines. So in a way it's all linked and it just enhances my other work. I'm a really great believer in different types of and diversity and people coming together. So being myself as a faith and being um, myself having seen the benefits of different faiths coming together and seeing how much commonality that there are between people and how that can grow and enhance each different person's faith by talking to people from other faiths, then I was just really passionate about being able to apply that to my healthcare work that I do.